वेलकम टू द क्लास चिल्ड्रन आई एम यूर सोशल साइंस टीचर मिसेस उषा भवानी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री यूनिट नाइन द एज ऑफ रेवल्यूशन हियर इन द एज ऑफ रेवल्यूशन पार्ट वन टू थ्री फोर द फोर डिविशंस आर देयर फोर पार्ट्स आर देयर so now in the first part in the age of revolutions what we are going to learn the foundation of colonies by european powers in america and later amalgamation and the formation of 13 colonies under britain and factors leading to the conflict between the colonies and england then the opposition of the colonies to taxation without representation leading to american war of independence okay children so to acquire the knowledge of the american war of independence here about the american war of independence three great revolutions in the 18th century brought about striking changes in western society the american revolution the french revolution and the industrial revolution these three revolutions great revolutions only changes in the brought changes in the western society okay ma the american revolution was the first political revolution though not so vital as the french revolution which was to shake the social foundation of europe the political changes engendered by the american revolution it provided inspiration for other anti colonial struggles thomas jefferson who drafted the declaration of independence asserted even at the beginning of 1776 that americans had neither wish nor interest to separate from english monarchy in july 1776 the same jefferson got his declaration independence adopted at a continental congress of the 13 colonies with its assertion that all men are created equal it was a revolutionary statement at a time when respect to kings and nobles was universal in this lesson we trace the foundation of english colonies in america and narrate the revolt of the colonies okay children here the colonies the american revolution here i said the 13 united states of america was great britain so uh, the colonies of european powers about the portuguese and the spanish they were the pioneers in geographical explorations and the founding of colonies the english lagged far behind in their colonization efforts the english possessed a theoretical claim to the north american mainland in view of the voyage of john cabot of the off the coast of nova scotia here you are seeing the ma- major battles of the american revolutions here about but they neither had the means nor the desire to back up that claim during the 16th century james town was the first british colony in america and the same here the american colonies here everything it is very clearly new england colonies middle colonies and southern colonies like everything here it is mentioned so here about in north america the places canada united states and mexico 
so here J james town was the first british colony in america as the same timing the ship of here countries that have been under european control so in the european continent that place under the never colonized by europe that is in the japan uh, indochina korea in these countries and all never colonized by europe and europe control the uh, purple color mentioned no ma that and colonized or controlled by europe that full of in the green shade and light um, greenish blue light green it is the partial european control or influence and some places it mentioned them yellow color european spheres of influence used okay here it is mentioned the may flower actually the ship may flower had taken a batch of puritans from plymouth it's in england it to america in 1620 they landed in the north and called the place new plymouth another puritan group led by john winthrop set up the massachusetts bay colony so here you are seeing the mayflower the ship that started a nation about here children what is a puritan actually what is puritan reformers who led a religious movement to reform the church of england dispensing with the teachings and the practices of roman catholic church were known as puritans now you are clear the stuart kings james 1 and charles 1 did not tolerate their attempts to reform the church of england the persecutions of puritans prompted many to leave england and settle in the colonies they founded they organized a puritan bay of life here it is clearly given a puritan is a member of a 17th century christian religious sect that emigrated from england to what is now the united states their beliefs have had a profound influence on american society for hundreds of years clear children the next one is the puritan foundations in america the pilgrims and many of our founding fathers were puritans puritans came to america in hopes of religious freedom see children many other groups before the puritans had reached other parts of the north american coastline and soon many more followed till there were colonies dotted all over the east coast from north to south there were catholic colonies and colonies founded by cavalier nobles from england and quaker colonies pennsylvania was named after the quaker pen okay so here you can see george fox who was he quakers were members of a christian group called the society of friends who were laying emphasis on the holy spirit rejected outward rites and then ordained ministry george fox was the founder of the society in england now it's clear no children quakers have the reputation of actively working for peace and opposing war okay the dutch founded a town and called it new amsterdam see here the quakers only you can see that that founder only the george fox now you are seeing the children uh, here the dutch founded a town called it new amsterdam the english later changed the name to new york very familiar new york you can see in the map the green color new york isn't it so in that place presently the name actually new amsterdam only present it is called new york there were also germans danes and frenchmen by the end of the 18th century there were 13 colonies on the east coast all under british control see here the legend 
here it is given the 13 american colonies in 1775 new england colonies middle colonies southern colonies so these are the countries by the end of the 18th century there were 13 colonies on the east coast all under british control the 13 colonies from north to south were which were the countries in dal road island new hampshire massachusetts Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, these places and all you can see New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina and Georgia. By 1775, the population of the 13 colonies had grown steadily, reaching nearly 3 million, a third of Britain's population. Clear children? So, the next one is about the plantations and the slave labor and the slavery. As the Native Americans resisted attempts to make them work in the plantations, the European planters, chiefly of tobacco in the southern states, Virginia, Carolinas and Georgia, in their search for labor resorted to acquiring slaves from Africa. The innocent people of Africa were captured in man hands and sent across the seas in a cruel and inhuman manner. In the northern states, conditions were different. There were compact farms and not huge plantations as in the south. Large number of workers were not needed for these farms. Thus, Two economic systems developed in these colonies. They see the, from the plains to the plantations here about how the, the people were. Native Americans had no place in either of these. So these people were gradually pushed back to the best. This was made easier by the disunity and divisions among the Native American tribes. So, the plantations and the slave labor. The next one, it increasing incidence of taxation, incidence of tax. Each colony had a governor and the legislature acted as a check on his powers. Thus, initially there was no conflict between the British and the American interest. The English, the English king and many big land owners in England had large financial interest in these colonies. Here, the seven years war of 1756 to 63 between Britain and France had centered on the colon control of colonies, especially in North America. Britain defeated France and took control of Canada. But the war cost the English heavily. The British ministers proposed that the American colonists pay some of the cost of the war. So, a series of taxes were imposed on the colonists. It should be noted that the Americans did not have representations in the British Parliament. About here, should know about the Native American in this situation. Even before the arrival of the Europeans in America, there was an indigenous population called the Native Americans. They used it to be referred to as Red Indians. It is now considered demeaning and historians do not use the term anymore. Spread over the vast American continent. They belonged to various tribes and many of them were at war with each other. Besides, they refused to work under conditions of slavery. Through a combination of violence and diplomacy, Europeans conquered and defeated many of these tribes greatly. Reduced in numbers totally today, greatly reduced in numbers Today they live in various reserves about the natives. 
here. Uh, uh, the Americans did not have representations in the British Parliament. In the Sugar Act of 1764, prohibited and imposed duties on the molasses, wine, silk, coffee and other luxurious items. As the act was enforced ruthlessly, it led to protest by merchants in legislature and town meetings. The preamble of the Sugar Act provided the slogan, No Taxation Without Representation. Here, the Sugar Act taxed sugar and a British soldiers search people's home for smuggling. It started. Another one, the Currency Act. So, uh, uh, the slogan, No Taxation Without Representation. So, the Currency Act was passed. That insisted on colonies repaying the debt only in gold or silver. It was a huge burden on the colonial economy. So what happened? The Quartering Act. The Quartering Act of 1765 required the colonies to pay for the cost of keeping British troops in America. What happened finally? The Stamp Act. The Stamp Act 1765 required that many printed materials in the colonies be produced on stamped paper produced in London carrying and imposed revenue stamps. So, the Townshend Act. The British Finance Minister Charles Townshend he introduced New duties on imports in 1767 known as Townshend Acts. They introduced duties on imports to colonies such as glass, paper, paint, lead and tea. Further, the British officers were empowered to search homes and business for smuggled or illegal goods. They were widespread protests against the Townshend Act. Merchants of Boston organized boycott British goods. Soon, other colonies joined the protest. The women formed their own organization called the Daughters of Liberty. The leaders insisted on constitutional methods and asked the people to remain calm. The British mobilized more troops to encounter the protest. So, here. This angered the people further. In March 1770, resentment rose in Boston. Here. In 1770, March, resentment rose in Boston when troops fired on a crowd which had thrown snowballs at them. There was firing by the troops resulting in many deaths. This incident is known as the Boston Massacre. It led to intense anti-British propaganda through newspapers, posters and pamphlets. As a result, as a result of protest and boycotts, the British Parliament repealed the Townshend Acts. However, it retained the tax on tea with the intention of encouraging the business of the East India Company by making it easy for to take the tea to America and sell it there. This harmed the local tea trade. So it was decided to boycott this foreign tea. So 5th March 1770, the Boston Massacre. Here, the Boston Tea Party. In many places, the colony subtracted the import of tea. In Charlestown, they unloaded the tea and let it rot in the dock. In New York and Philadelphia, ships carrying tea were blocked. In December 1773, a group of men discussed themselves as Native Americans boarded the cargo vessels and threw the tea overboard, hailed as the Boston Tea Party. This was done publicly before a large sympathetic crowd 
It was a challenge which led to war between the rebellious colonies and England. So, this incident, Boston Tea Party. The next one is the American War of Independence. In 1774, a little before war began between the colonies and England, George Washington stated that no thinking man in North America desired independence and yet he became the colonist, commander-in-chief and later the first president of the American Republic. So the colonies did not begin fighting for their shake of independence. Their grievances were taxation and their restrictions on trade. They challenged the right of the British Parliament to tax them against their will. No taxation without representation was their famous battle cry. So this was the American War of Independence. So till this, the part one video come to an end. So from this many acts, that is Sugar Act, Currency Act, Quartering Act, Stamp Act, very important Townshend Act and Boston Tea Party and how and when it was started the American War of Independence also I explained. So you children once go through it and in the part 2 the Continental Congress the next video I will continue. The first video I explained about the American War of Independence and uh, different acts, the Sugar Act, the Currency Act, and the Quartering Act, Townshend Act, about the Boston Tea Party, everything I explained to you. In this second video, the part 2, here the, in the Age of Revolutions lesson, the Continental Congress, the 5th of September 1774, uh, what was happened in the Continental Congress? Disturbed by the developments in Boston Harbor, the British government appointed General Gage as Governor of Massachusetts with a mandate to quell the resistance. It also dispatched troops to Boston and passed the Intolerable Acts which declared that all those who broke the laws would be taken to Britain for trial. In May 1774, in the Virginia Assembly, Thomas Jefferson, you can see Thomas, Thomas Jefferson, he declared that 1st June 1774 would be a day of fasting and prayer. In response to this declaration, the colonial governor dissolved the assembly. Thereafter, the members drafted a resolution to form the Continental Congress. Soon, members joined from other colonies. On 5th September 1774, the first Continental Congress met in Philadelphia. The Congress agreed to vote by the representatives of colonies and endorsed the resolution declaring the Intolerable Act null and void. It called for economic sanctions against the British. The Congress adopted a declaration of American rights. Next, the Second Continental Congress. The Second Continental Congress met on 10th May 1775 at Philadelphia. John Adams, Sam Adams, Richard Henry Lee and Thomas Jefferson were some prominent members of the Congress. It organized the army gathered around Boston as the Continental Army and placed it under the command of John Washington. Still hoping for a truce, the Congress dispatched the Olive Branch Petition to the King and adopted the declaration of the causes and the necessity of taking up arms. As the war 
progress. The Continental Congress assumed the functions of government. In July 1775, it appointed commissioners to negotiate with the Native Americans. It also established a postal department with Benjamin Franklin as postmaster general. A committee was formed to explore the possibility of foreign aid. Here, the Battle of Bunker Hill. On 17th June 1775, the Battle of Bunker Hill, the first major battle was fought in Massachusetts. The 2200 strong British troops were, were twice forced to retreat. On the third attempt, British troops emerged victorious with a heavy casualty of nearly 1000 soldiers. After the battle, Washington assumed control of the American forces. Soon, the British forces retreated from Boston. Hear about the Declaration of Independence in January 1776. An anonymous pamphlet under the title Common Sense was published. It was authored by Thomas Paine who had recently migrated to America from England. It attacked the allegiance to the crown and called for complete independence. More than 100,000 copies of the pamphlet were sold quickly. George Washington remarked, Common sense is working a powerful change in the minds of men. On June 7th, 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia moved a resolution for independence. After much debate, the Declaration of Independence, drafted by Thomas Jefferson, was adopted by the Congress on July 4, 1776. This day is celebrated by the Americans as Independence Day. War on 2nd July 1776, the British under General Howey attempted to regain what they had lost. Washington was forced to evacuate Long Island. The main American army managed to reach Pennsylvania. While Howey waited in New York for the winter to pass, Washington made a daring attack on Christmas night. At Trenton, the British forces were defeated in Princeton. About the French alliance. In 1777, the British attempts at splitting the colonies into two by a campaign from the north failed. They managed, however, they managed to occupy Philadelphia. Washington's efforts to take a town to near Philadelphia were spoiled by Lord Cornwallis. But the British were defeated at Saratoga. This defeat paved the way for an alliance between France and the Americans. On 6th February 1778, France and America signed two treaties by which France recognized the United States of America and offered trade concessions. By June 1778, England and France were at war. About the Cornwallis. Actually, Cornwallis born into an aristocratic family and educated at Eton and Cambridge. Cornwallis joined the army in 1757. Upon his father's death in 1762, he became Earl Cornwallis and entered the House of Lords, the Upper House of Britain. His military actions in the American War of Independence was praiseworthy, inflicting defeats on the American army in a few battles though finally he had to surrender his army at Yorktown. Despite this defeat, Cornwallis retained the confidence of successive British governments and continued to enjoy an active career. Knighted in 1786, he was appointed Governor General by the East India Company government in British India. About the victory at Yorktown. In September, Washington, Washington 
attacked york town with them combined american and french troops on 19th october 1781 cornwallis surrendered in 1783 the peace of paris was signed great britain agreed to the independence of the united states the military band played the tune the world turned upside down as british forces departed from york town in 1781 the results of the okay in the war the american war of independence came to an end what happened the result, what was the results the immediate results of the war was america's independence for the first time the colonial power was overthrown by the colonized leading to the establishment of a republican government in the united states the colonists wanted to get rid of the feudal inequalities of europe and they succeeded for many followers of the enlightenment in europe the language of the declaration of independence seemed a living fulfillment of their ideals the declaration of independence of 1776 stated that all men are born equal By 1777, nearly all the colonies had a written constitution. These constitutions protested individual rights, freedom of press, and freedom of religion. The Continental Congress had drafted the Articles of Confederation. The Church and the State were separated. Thomas Jefferson, in his Virginia Statute, stated for religious freedom. introduced freedom of religion it was later incorporated into the american constitution about the lafayette lafayette fought the british on washington side through to the conclusive battle at yorktown yorktown in 1781 later during the french revolution served the french national guard at its commander he penned the declaration of the rights of man and the citizen with the help of jefferson which the national assembly of france adopted on august 27 1789 okay children till about the lafayette the part 2 video come to an end in this second video you learnt about the continental congress and what done in the second continental congress and the battle of bunker hill and the declaration of independence and in 1776 war and french alliance victory at yorktown and the results of the american war of independence also i explained okay children go through it thank